Hey everybody, Piot Michael here. You know me as the voice of fearless leader from Rocky and Bullwinkle, Mochi from Waffles and Mochi, and Jason Hudson from Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. And you're watching In Conversation with Amber the Fangirl, ATF. It's going to be a fun one. Hi guys, Amber here. Welcome back to another episode of In Conversation with ATF. My guest today, I've been friends with since I made my Rocky Bullwinkle documentary, actually, because he voiced Fearless Leader in the Rocky Bullwinkle reboot, the one on Amazon Prime. He has also voiced Mochi in Waffles and Mochi, yes, the Netflix set show with um, Michelle Obama in it. So cute, oh my gosh. Um, Master Ugwe in various Kung Fu Panda media. Um, Fritz in Where's Waldo and he's also been a cast member in Jimmy Kimmel Live he's known for doing a lot of impressions as well and he's also done work for shows such as Animaniacs, Troll Hunters, Rise of the Titans and Family Guy and many many more my guest is none other than Piot Michael hi hello hi thanks for having me on the show you're welcome it's so lovely to see you again yeah, good to see you. You're all purply. Is there an occasion you're why? Why are you so purply? You like to change up? Yeah, I, lo I love changing my hair color now and then. I usually change it to blue. But I've only had it purple like once or twice before, so I've just decided to go back to purple again because I always go for blues. So I'm like, yeah, time for a change. Very cool. Yeah, and last time we spoke was for my Rock and Bull Uncle documentary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was. That that was that was quite good actually. The Rocky and Bullwinkle reboot, and I know you probably you, we you answered this when I last spoke to you, but when you auditioned for Fearless Leader, did you try and sound like Bill at all, or what happened when you auditioned for? The Rocky yeah, Bullwinkle? no. Um, yeah. originally they uh had the voice of Fearless Leader, and they were asking for a match, but they also asked you know try something different. And so when I booked the job, I didn't know if they were going for the match or if they wanted the the other version I gave. And it kind of fell in between. They were, you know, they were honoring Fearless Leader, but also they wanted the character to grow because his original was the little, um, I, I think it was just like two World War II based, you know, because that was the time in communism. And so they said, okay, well, let's try and get away from that. And originally he was uh, a lot lower energy you know, closer to the show. So he's just like, you know, get that Rocky and Bullwinkle. We must find a way to get that stinky pie. And um, when they did some test records, they realized that they wanted more energy from him. And so we kept pushing him and pushing him. And it was more fun to make him like just absolutely crazy. So he was the high energy, fearless leader that wasn't uh, like the original, but was a lot of fun to play. And I think, uh, really played to the uh the energy of of kids today and so uh that was a lot of fun to do yeah definitely i agree uh could you give me a bit of fearless leader sure fearless leader now sounds a lot like this he's very excited to talk because he's all about me 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 the fearless leader <laughs> oh my gosh, that brings, that brings back so many memories. And I know people would be like, well, Amber, the show's not that old. But to me, three years has gone by very fast since I yeah, first Yeah, yeah, we were hoping it. that there'd be more, you know, because um, with traditional television, network television productions, there'll be, you know, several seasons. But now with streaming, it, it turns into two or three seasons max for a lot of shows, which is kind of sad because you get excited as a fan. You're like, wow, this show's going to go on and on and on. But in reality, the streaming service says, no, we got the show that we wanted to make and we want to make a different show. And if you like the show, rewatch it again. So it's kind of sad because if you, if you look at a lot of projects now, that's kind of how it is. It's, you know, if you're lucky two seasons. Yeah. So just to confirm, there is no season three of Rock and Roll. Sadly not. No, oh, we'd love to have it. And, you know, the cast shame. really uh, loves it. And we stay in touch. We'll always, uh, you know, every anniversary of the show, uh, we'll, we'll text each other pictures of us recording or playing around and yeah. send each other messages. And no, it was a, a fantastic show and a great group of people. Yeah, But I everybody's agree. doing fun projects you know, beyond that. And that's what's fun is that you get to work with them again or see where they're going. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, obviously, I've I've spoken to a few people before and they've said how they've bumped into past cast members working on a different show. And they say it's always so nice to see them in the corridors of the recording studios, whether they're going in and they're just coming out or whether they're just going in and they're coming out. So, yeah, it's just nice to run. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, the thing is that the, the industry, you got to keep moving. So um, even when you, you finish a show, when you're finished recording, before they're done animating, you may find out that the show was finished, you know, and it's not going to go beyond one season. And sometimes that's sad because, you know, you put in all this work and effort and you're so excited to promote the show. But while you're promoting it, you know that it's not going to go anywhere. So, you know, sometimes it, it, it just it's just the way the business is, you know, yeah, Cause it takes so long to produce. Yeah, I'm just going to quickly stick my fan on just one second. Sure, because we're having a massive heat wave in the UK since oh. Sunday it's been approximately 30 degrees it's about 24 degrees outside now and it's like evening so I've been so hot I've hardly been working like I had I literally have to move out of my bedroom because it's the hottest room in the house when it obviously when the heat comes around and oh my gosh yeah I awful. mean I I record inside a little studio converted from a uh, closet and I'll have to turn off all the AC to make sure I can record. So yeah, it, it gets hot. But what's the temperature now in the UK? Um, about twenty four degrees outside. Wow. My room's the hottest in the house because obviously the sun obviously comes up and then it's on that side coming into my bedroom. But the thing is, it stays hot throughout the day, even at night. It's still the hottest room in the house, which mm. kind of sucks. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's not pleasant. But now we gotta we gotta you know make sure people are aware that you know this is real climate change happening so can't ignore it and got to get used to it yeah. so a lot more people will be wearing tank tops and speedos get ready yeah it's, it's scary though i mean how fast the world changes i mean yeah it's just we we never had have, have these kind of heat waves before i mean down south they're getting thunderstorms and rain we're up here getting massive heat waves i remember i lived in colchester for a year because i went to studied abroad at university of essex oh, wow. and when i first came i came during the summer so maybe late august before school started i can't remember and um i came onto campus and everybody was lying down on the grass in the sunshine and i was going what is this how it is in essex like it's sunny every day and then i talked to some kid and they said no no, no it, it's there's hardly any sun here. That's why everybody's outside right now. They're all lying like they were at the beach. And sure enough, two days later, it was you know black to being uh, cloudy, stormy, and cold. But now it seems like it's it's gotten so much hotter. Yeah, I'll I'll take a photo of just outside just outside my bedroom, and you'll probably just see my um my Boris Funko because I have a I have a Boris Funko pop on my windowsill. Boris Badenov. I mm -hmm. can't find any of the other Rock and Roll ones. I've only found him in the UK so far. Mm. I haven't found the others. I just got a fun Funko in a can. Let me see if I can grab it. Mm. I don't know what this be. Is this? Oh, it's Fearless Leader himself! Oh, wow! This is Fearless Leader in a can. I, I haven't say, really even opened it. I'm just no, kept him some... in there. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, I haven't even opened it. I kind of oh, just wow. leave him in the can there. Oh, he's imprisoned. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, I can access him. <laughs> yeah, they've just released a super chip. Please, let before. me free. I don't like it. It's too bubbly in here. They just released a super chicken Funko Pop, so I'm kind mm. of glad. I'm really glad they're starting to get more J Ward properties out as Funko Pops. Yeah, yeah, I... I... I, I wonder what uh, what they'll do to produce things. I know that last year, what was really exciting for us was they were uh, erecting the uh, Bullwinkle statue. statue in West Hollywood, and we all wanted to gather, and they were going to have a big celebration, but because of COVID, we couldn't. So I don't even know if they, I believe it's up there now. Yeah, it is the up there. The refurbished one, so. but I, I still haven't visited it, oh, which yeah. would be fun to see. I'm hoping to get to America next summer, like Los Angeles, California, so I can see the statue for myself. In Very cool. Very exciting times, really. So, also, you're not obviously not just known for being fearless leader. You're also known that, okay, let's talk about your biggest project, you know, this year, this year, Waffles and Mochi on mm. Netflix. 
Oh, you have a little mochi. Oh, you have a I don't have a little mochi. I'll just. Oh, do you? Oh, we need a mochi plush. Definitely the mochi plush. Yeah, I, I, I think I saw some, uh, you know, some drawings that I thought might be a hint that there could be toys or plushies or something, but I have no idea if they're going to do anything. I'm, I'm sure they, uh, you know, they're developing quite a fan base now with it, so. I'll Hopefully get they uh, get some fun things. I know that they have little cookbooks and things like that. Oh, do they? It's, yeah, they've got some storybooks, and uh, I think they have little recipes, or at least they're they're just little storybooks about food. Oh wow! Um, and they have uh, waffles and mochi, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think it's a lovely show. I mean, obviously I've seen the sneak peeks of it, and the music's lovely. I think Kate Micucci, um well, um, she did some of the music for the show mm. as part of um, her Garfunkel Notes duo. So, yeah, the music is quite good. Uh, I'll just have to remember who the other person in Garfunkel Notes is. Uh, Ricky Lindholm. Sorry, excuse me. Um, so, the, uh, the, the, the question we're all dying to know, did you ever meet Michelle Obama during production of Waffles and Mochi? Unfortunately, I did not. Um the way the show works is they have, you know, puppeteers and live actors, and they also travel all around the world. They actually went to those places. They aren't like in studio and a green screen and hired oh, wow. people wearing costumes. They actually went uh, to real world sites. So they'd go to Peru. They would go, you know, to Hawaii or did they go to Hawaii? I can't remember. Um, but they would go to different places. And um, so that's, you know, Production-wise, much more difficult for people to go. The puppeteers did go. So uh, Michelle, who's the voice, not Michelle Obama. Um, uh, her name is, I think, Michelle Zamara. Uh, she's the puppeteer for, for Waffles. And she's the actual voice for Waffles. And um, I want to see if I can get her name right because I feel Michelle so bad. Michelle Zamora. Yes, it was Zamora. Um, she's the voice of Waffles. So she would actually go to the destinations because she would do the hand puppet and that sort of thing. And um, I don't even know, uh, you, you might have to ask her, you should try and interview her. her she's, she's great. Um, she might have been the temporary voice and they decided to go with her as the voice of Waffles. I don't know if that's true, but sometimes that's the case with puppeteers where they'll go, they'll just do the puppeteering and then someone will come in later and do the voice or you'll do the voice on set and there's a puppeteer or the, the actor does the puppet. So it, it, it's, you know, it depends on the production. For this one, I did Mochi's voice after they finished filming. Wow. So they had their, and they didn't know what voice they wanted for him. So we, we tried several voices. Um, and at one point he was, he was speaking fluently. He was speaking perfect English and they said, no, it doesn't work. Um, we tried different tones and that sort of thing. And then we found we liked his gibberish and uh, it kind of fit the character, but they wanted it more unique because there are a lot of characters who are, you know, kind of like Gizmo or even uh, my ferret Fritz from Where's Waldo? You know, because Fritz is, you know, pretty similar tone, but he's a little uh, more animalistic. So he's... Um, so for Mochi to separate it, we decided to make his his noises start with an M. So all of his noises, most of them, are M sounds. And then when he gets happy, he he makes a little purring sound like a cat, so like, <laughs> which uh, which is fun because um, I have a lot of cats and. Um, uh we uh you know we were trying to figure out how to make him cuter and i was like no well, what's cuter than a cat so when he eats and he likes something tasty he's like <laughs> super fun oh, that's just too cute oh man now you can be able to binge watch it now i mean i have netflix on my ipad and that i'm so tempted to just watch the series well you it's there i think they're short they're like 20 minutes each and you can uh you can sit through the first one and get get the vibe and yeah, yeah. No, they're they're fun 
Yeah, not just for preschoolers or little kids, it's for all ages. Yeah, it's it's and there's also some celebrities that drop in, Zach Galifianakis, um, you know, there's uh, people from all over that just, you know, they participate kind of like Sesame Street, so you'll see them hanging out and it's a lot of fun. That's, that's so cool. Um, driving away from your voice work now, well, it is kind of related to voices, but I really just wanted to ask, how did you get into voiceover? Well, originally I wanted to be an animator, so I wanted to work as an artist, um, wanted to make my own cartoons. And so I studied animation and studied um, drawing and caricature art, and I found that I enjoyed embodying the characters as well, and it came more naturally to me than drawing. Um, when I would sit down and draw, I'd lose patience a lot, and my mind was just too busy. Um, and I still love it and, uh, wish I can, you know, create a cartoon later on. But from, from that, it went into voiceover just because I would play with my voice all the time. And, um, I started off doing impressions and shared it online, got some attention and said, Hey, this is cool. I, I guess people like my impressions. And so I shared it more and started uh, researching and seeing people that are like like Mel Blanc of course Peter Sellers and seeing that these guys started out in radio and so I you know studied some radio became a little DJ at my university and uh, started focusing more on acting and theater and uh, from there I said all right well let's uh, let's give it a try and I focused on comedy um, so sketch comedy stand-up comedy um you know impression videos and then voiceover for me was always a goal and i said well i'll try and do voiceover when i can and basically just building up one project to another over uh, over 10 years nice uh if you were an animator today and not a voice actor what do you think you would be doing right now instead of recording mm, that's a good question i don't know i i i found that you know, animation is very tedious and my mind doesn't work as well to sit down and keep repeating the same exact thing. I don't have the patience for that. So I would probably be a character designer uh, or animation director. You know, I would feel more involved in that sort of thing. So I, I would love to have designed the look of characters and, um, you know, yeah. been more on the conceptual side of things. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, I don't have the patience as well. I mean, just working on my Bill Scott documentary, I have to take like half an hour breaks because I'll, I get really focused on it. But when I'm trying to focus myself, I'm like, I can't do it. And then I just end up going off task. Da, 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 da. So, yeah, I have a very short attention span. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, you know, just just like that. Well, have you have you tried any acting or any um performative arts i have in fact i study performing arts at college i've just graduated and i'm moving up to the next degree so oh congrats that's awesome thank you yeah because i i mean for me personally i found that's what's more exciting is because it's always something different you get to transform you get to you know move around you get to you get to hyper focus on something and then you know then uh you know improv comedy for me was uh really helpful for my attention span because it's always different. It's never the same because if you do plays and stuff, and you're like, bum, 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 it's repetitive. But with yeah. improv and especially comedy, it's a lot of fun while you're still developing great skills. Yeah, I prefer improv as well, to be fair. I mean, I mean, learning lines for stuff is just, you know, just hard, I guess. But at the same time, you know, when you're voice acting, at least you can look at the script when you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, acting is acting, um, but uh, with voiceover, you do have the benefit of looking at the lines, and you should look at the lines. A lot of actors who come from stage or television will look at the lines of dialogue, and they'll grab the microphone, and instead of looking at the script, they'll just look at the microphone, and they'll forget their line. But they don't need to do that, because the lines are right there. So it's a, it's a different art form. you got to switch your brain a little bit to be able to read something as if it's the first time you're saying it yeah and sometimes that's why um a lot of the more established actors in the voiceover community 
they're more confident with their performance and they need very few takes, you know, one, two takes, maybe three, um, because they get that genuine energy. Cause if you overdo something, then it just stagnates and, uh, it's not as natural in the performance, but yeah, memorizing lines is not my favorite either. Anthony Hopkins reads a script 200 times before he gets on wow. set, but wow. that's what he loves to do. I couldn't do that. That's, I mean, I that's, that's too much. I, yeah. I go crazy. I agree. Well, actually, since we last spoke, um, in 2019, I actually got my first voiceover role. You did doing what? Um, well, you can't really see it, but right here next to obviously me and my Rocky cosplay, there's a little helicopter children's ride. I yeah. was the voiceover for that in early 2020. Wow, that's great! Congrats. Thank what did the helicopter sound like? Um, well, it was a little helicopter. Um, it was it was uh, exhibited shown in London at this exhibition, and kind of sounded like "Heli to Tower, come in Tower, up, up and away." Something that's like that. Awesome. Um, I remember the the the, uh, the voice director, who was obviously one of the people who worked for the company, only really did it as like a little favor. Um, it was like, oh yeah, could you um. Could you try uh, saying rotor power? I'm like, yeah, sure. And he's like, think of it as Scrappy Doo saying puppy power. And he sent me a link to obviously Don Messick as um, Scrappy Doo saying puppy power. I'm like, yeah, okay. And then I later found out that puppy power was actually improvised in Frank Welker's audition for the character. And then it stayed wow. as his catchphrase. So yeah, well, that's that's the amazing thing about improv is um, yeah. you know is uh, a lot of that just comes that's out. What improv and yes, of yeah, course. That's what it is. And yeah, I've I've met Frank three times, twice virtually, once in really? person. Next time, oh. I need to thank him because if it weren't for Puppy Power, then well, though, yeah, those those are the ones they inspire us. And you know, to this day, you look at those old old cartoons, and I love seeing all those uh, wonderful things, and then realizing it was really just a you know a couple dozen people who made all those old cartoons. Yeah, definitely. Have you ever met Frank Welker? I have on, I'm trying to think, the Animaniacs. Uh, <gasps> oh, I came yes, because you, you do, did a few voices, didn't you? I did. Yeah, I just did like a, a, a background guest spot. Um, but it was so much fun to do because, you know, to be in the same studio with those guys. Um, I think uh, I went in before him, so it was just in the green room, which is the waiting area. So, yeah, he was... Uh, he was there, and I think he said he. Uh, I introduced myself, and he said, "Oh, I know you," and that's always like, "What? Wow! How do, you know me? How do you know me?" But also, it could be the nice professional way of being like, "I don't know who you are, but I'm going to be nice and say I know you to make you feel good." So um, who knows? But he was a very nice guy, and um, yeah, of course, huge inspiration for you know all animal characters that I do. You know, um, I. Uh, any anytime you do a, an animal voice, you're like, Ooh, gotta be careful. That sounds so much like Frank Welker, <laughs> because he pioneered all of that. But then in reality, it's like you know the human vocal cords can only go so far. And yeah. Dee Bradley Baker is probably the oh. only other person who can uh, do animal voices that are so so realistic and so unique that uh, he's got his own mansion filled with uh, you know animal characters that he can pull out wow. while everybody else is pretending to be frank welker <laughs> hey i was just gonna ask you um when did you record for your spots on animaniacs oh i don't know i'm trying to think maybe because i believe 2019 oh so i was probably that was before i met him then because i met him in 2020 just before the mm. pandemic he did his first uk appearance just before covid yeah yeah because animaniacs it came yeah. out last year so it took, yeah. yeah it took it took a Took about Last a year. year to most of the produce. voice acting was done 2018, 2019. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wow. It's weird to think that. Like three years of production and then it finally comes out and you think it's brand new. Well, no, these lines are about and then, three years and old. And then you watch it, watch it in, in two days and you go, all right, more, more, more. More. Ooh, well, there's season two coming out. I need to, I haven't even finished watching season one, so I need to catch yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what do you prefer? Do you like to binge watch through everything or do you like to go, say, watch it and then the next week watch it? Because Disney does that now where they'll, They'll release one episode and then you have to wait for a week for the next one and it kind of builds the old excitement of tv where it's like 
I wonder what's going to happen. For one week, you're just talking about, talking about, talking about it. Versus if you binge watch it, you just watch it and then you it just goes in one ear, out the other. And then you're I like... For binge watching. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, Disney Plus do the whole an episode every week with like Loki, Monsters at Work, you know, the new Monsters Inc. show. I, I That's probably my favorite Disney Plus show at the moment. I mean, they obviously they release a new episode every Wednesday. So obviously I sit around the couch, load up Disney Plus on my phone and just watch it. And so it's just so addictive. I mean, yes, I just keep watching every single episode like every day until, you know, a new one comes out. So I suppose, yeah, just waiting for another week now for the next one to come out. <laughs> The yeah. Game. <laughs> yeah it's uh yeah and i i wish i had more time to to watch all of it and uh yeah at the end of the day i i just sit down on the couch and there's so many things to watch we don't know what to watch so i just watch the original star trek i haven't even finished the show so oh. i'm just catching up on old star trek from the 60s so i still have four decades of television to catch up on wow <laughs> um bit of an unrelated question but who's the famous per- the most famous person you've ever worked with on a show oh Oh, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I'm trying to think live action. I've done work with Weird Al. <gasps> I love Weird um, Al. I interviewed him for my Bill documentary. He was yeah, so nice. He's so nice. The nicest guy ever. And, so you know, great. that's where you're, you're geeking out. I did a scene with him. Oh, and he wow. Was, he was so nice and so professional. But also... Um, improvising he was so wacky and weird uh like his name and uh, you you have to like keep a straight face while he's saying you know random stuff and uh, that was that was really hard to do because he's so funny but um i think maybe weird al uh kevin pollock who's in um the marvelous miss myrtle um I'm trying to think who else uh, well how about who's the nicest person larry king wow before he passed away did the a puppet show and he was there got to meet him but yeah i don't know but i mean most I famous say, i've met conan could... o'brien oh i was gonna say if you wouldn't think of a famous person who's the nicest person that's probably an equal it's just a question that's hard to answer as the last one <laughs> yeah i mean I, I i don't think i've i could say that i've met a mean person um, everybody that I've met, I've been fortunate to uh, meet some really nice people. I, I don't think anybody's been mean, so I can't call out and say this person's been ultra nice, the nicest of nice. Um, no, I think everybody's been very kind and and uh, warm and, and really, really fun to be around. That's lovely. Uh, going back to voiceover work, actually, uh, what about your time on Wes Waldo doing the voice of Fritz? Well, Fritz, that was a lot of fun because um, that was uh, really my first full show first as an fella. animal character. Yeah. It reminds me of and... Swiper from Dory, it does actually. I'm mm. looking at a picture of them. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All the names, bro, by wall, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, and uh, Fritz was one of the first episodes, I mean, first shows where I could do an animal for the entire series. And not only that, he doesn't really talk much. Um, he just, you know, makes animal noises, gobbles things down and then gets kind of to like a food trance when he sees or sniffs food that he likes. Um, so that was a a unique experience for me and and challenging too, because every episode can end up sounding the same, you know, because he's, so the hardest part was trying to find that range and making it fun for me so that when I'm performing, I go, this feels like a living real character and so you have to kind of like switch gears a little bit because you what they do is they would write out the lines like hey Adlulu look over there it's a marshmallow truck and then as Fritz you would say and uh you know you, you don't really understand what that is so you have to embody that a lot more and I mean, the benefit was Odd Lulu would usually repeat it. She's like, oh, yeah, that looks like a marshmallow truck. Um, but in my mind and during the performance, I would try and make it that uh, he really was speaking as eloquently as he could within his marbled mush ferret mouth, which was oh. usually filled with cheese or something. 
I mean, Thomas Lennon was on the show as well. What's it like working yeah. with him? He was Wizard Whitebeard, I believe. Yes, Thomas Lennon is um, very committed to his performances. And um, it was fun to do with him because he would jump into the studio and he would fully embody and move his whole body, which was, you know, uh, ab an absolute must when you do voiceover because, you know, if you sit down and you just talk, you're not going to have any energy to sort of bring that energy. You have to move around. And, and it was uh, exciting to be around him. Uh, did a handful of episodes with him, but he mostly recorded, I think, uh, separately from, uh, from us. Yeah. I, I just remembered something. Mm. Thomas actually voiced Fearless Leader once in the 2014 mm -hmm. in the CGI yeah. Rock and Boy yeah. course. So it's two yeah, he did a pretty good job, too. He did, he did good. It's so cool. Did you ever talk about that with him or not? No, no, I didn't. Um, no, it's, yeah, I should have asked him about that. But uh, That would have been he, cool. He, fearless he Leader. Would have gone, Wait a minute. <laughs> You're a Fearless Leader now? Mm, time to fight. Yeah, they need to have a Rock and Bullwinkle uh universe multi-universe <laughs> yes the they're doing it coming with, they're and doing fight it, they're doing it with hannah barbera right now they did scoop mm. they're working on um like a flintstones film a jetsons film like a racist film yeah we need a rock, rock, and, rock and ball and cool universe but then again a movie universe does exist because of the 2000 film and the dudley d right film and the mm -hmm. george the jungle film and the boris and natasha film that no one remembers from 1992 so yeah i guess Good work. Good work. Rock and Roll and Cool MCU. Rock R and B C U. Rock and Roll and Cool Cinematic Universe. <laughs> J Ward Cinematic Universe? Who knows? Mm -hmm. I would I would love that. I would personally love that. And hey, I, I've also i I've spoken to another Where's um Wally Castle. And it's Where's Wally over here, so I'll call it as that. It's obviously just to me actually no i'll just call it where's waldo because obviously most of my, most of the voice actors i've uh, interviewed are americans would be you know more localized um i've actually spoken there was actually a where's waldo series in the 90s um mm -hmm. that aired yeah. on cbs well itv over here um mm -hmm. townsend Coleman was the voice of uh, waldo and i actually mm. interviewed him not long ago so um, yeah it was quite cool yeah, yeah, I remember seeing that as he, he Thompson was uh, one of the Ninja Turtles too, right? He was indeed. Yeah, I mean during the nineties. Michelangelo. He, he, yes, yes. No, he's a great actor, and uh, yeah, yeah. Because uh, the difference with our uh, our reboot of Where's Waldo was it was aimed more at younger children yeah. so they made the cast younger yeah and um, Waldo was voiced by Joshua Rush I think he's about 19 so he, he would have been about 17 18 yeah when yeah but on the show I think they make him about you know 15 years old and he's just a young explorer and uh, it's a it's a fun idea so that they could kind of you know have yeah. different adventures than uh an older Waldo because yeah. in the books he's just like I'm hiding I don't want to deal with people and then the younger <laughs> Waldo the younger Waldo is just kind of like, I'm lost. Where did he go? Oh, there he is. You know, he's always on a mission to to do something, but he he kind of just disappears because he's he's engrossed in some type of uh, some type of project or something. Did you ever meet Joshua Rush during? Oh yes, recording? of course. Yeah, no, no. We did a couple of recording sessions together, and uh, yeah, I met him many times, and he's uh, he's great, and he's also uh, he's moving into politics. Joshua's been. Um, Is he? Wow. Yeah, I think he's still doing some acting, but he's uh, very political, and uh, I think he's done some interning in oh, wow. Washington D.C. to. Uh, so I, I don't know what his goal is, but he. I think he might be the next president of the United States. He's now. So where's Where's Joshua? Where's Joshua? He's like the <laughs> new book line needs to be released. He's actually started a new job as the communications director for the Utah Democratic Party. There you go. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And he's only nineteen. Yeah, wow, he's got 2001. Wow, that is aspirations. Amazing. And I only know him as Turner from Parental Guidance and also Carl from Mr. Peabody and Sherman and Bunga from The Lion Guard. You know, I really I should get him on this show to be fair. That would be yeah, he's, he's great. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna try and contact him after this. You've inspired me now, Piot. You can do it and tell him you're a professional voice actress and you need help. Yeah, I'm trying to interview as many people as I can to show that little people can talk to their idols because 
Um, and when I was younger, people were like, oh, yeah, you'll never meet your idols. You'll never get to talk to your idols. I'm like, uh, look at me now. Talking with Piotr Michael, literally. Mochi from well, Michael's Mochi. So cool. Not everybody gets to talk to you. So we're the lucky ones. Yeah. That, that everyone misses out. And I'm too good for them. <laughs> of course. You're, you're like, I'm busy right now. I don't I don't have time to talk to you. Like, please, Amber, please. Can we <laughs> schedule tomorrow? No. No, I'm I'm I'll be I'll be I'll be streaming. I'm talking oh, to No, no, come on. Yes, I'll be too busy talking to Frank Welker. What? Tell him hello. I've been trying to get him for the longest time on this show and it's never been a reality, so Well, I I know he's he's very oh, busy, yeah, so he's it was rare for me to even see him in the wild as they say. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Maybe one um, day. Well, I'm seeing him yeah. this uh October in Edinburgh, so I That'll have a chance. Be fun. Yeah, definitely. I'm so excited for it. We went for this con convention post. -COVID. Do you dress up as any of the characters when you go meet? I'll probably dress up as Rocky again. Oh. I know it's you know. Well, I don't have any other good cosplay ideas, and I did go. Can't wear a big green blanket and just say you're Slimer. I could, yeah. Well, I was, I was, I was probably one of the cosplays like Ravage or Garfield or someone like that. But I, I don't know now. I. I Obviously, Frank hasn't really voiced any female characters that I can easily cosplay as, so I don't know. Yeah, maybe just just dress up as a cat and say I'm Ravage from Transformers. <laughs> Good work. Oh, yeah, I mean, I for me, I I, I would be uh, I I couldn't invest time into a costume, so I would just like get a pin or a little uh, insignia or something small, even just a T-shirt. Well, I'm actually me. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. Just oh. wearing a t-shirt is, is cool. Oh, well, I was going to say, I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to make some modifications to my Rocky cosplay. Um, I know, obviously, it's like, you know, t-shirt, leggings. But I'm planning on getting, like, a piece of fabric, sticking it here, and then another one here, then some down here. So when I put my arms out, I look like a real flying squirrel. There you go. <laughs> so, you've got to you've gotta, um, recreate the opening sequence. Da, 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 da. Jump off flying a, around in front jump of a off a green screen. No, green screen. You got to don't, don't hurt yourself. Oh. Well, unless there's a mattress on the floor or cushions, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Unless I go to a professional studio, I don't know. But you know, actually, that's a really good idea. But who's going to play Bullwinkle? You could play Bullwinkle. I could. Oh, I could do a Bullwinkle cosplay. What can I hear your 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 best Bullwinkle and Rocky voice? <laughs> oh, Rocky's really just a thing, and he's just a thing on Tara Strong. I can't really do a Rocky or anything like that. You know, it's it's more of like 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 a boyish voice. I mean, it's there you, you go. Know, yeah. Tara well, he is a boy, so he, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a girl doing a boy voice. Though. And then and then Bullwinkle, yeah. I can't really do Bullwinkle because he he's, Bullwinkle. A, he, he's more of a male character. Um, I I just I to make it sound like boo or anything like that. So. Yeah, I'm um, best to leave that to the professionals, the Bullwinkle one. <laughs> well, with each voice, it just takes practice for me when I would do an impression. I would say, oh, gosh, I wish I could sound like that person. And if I paid attention and if I focused and I worked hard, I could get pretty close to it. And what's fun is your version of Bullwinkle may not sound exactly like Bullwinkle, but it may sound unique enough that you just created a new character. Female Bullwinkle. You know, Right, female Bullwinkle, or you adjust it, and now you've got a new character that you can use for your auditions. Bullwinkle's for... girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, it's me, Bullwinkle's girlfriend. I can't remember what were. <gasps> Bella Winkle. Yeah. Bella I, Winkle. I there see you go. I, I'm Bella Winkle Moose. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. It's kind of a dumb character, but you know, Bullwinkle's my sweetheart. Isn't like that? I don't know. What, Bella Winkle? Mm, this is some new development. Hi. Right. Boris, Natasha, get rid of this second moose. <laughs> belongs on fan fiction, though. It belongs <laughs> to the fan fiction world. But hey, you never know. Someone could, so could someone could have come up with it before me. But yeah, you know, it's just copyrighted material. At the end of the day, <laughs> um, we're rounded to the end of our interview. I was going to say we could have about five, ten more minutes, if that's okay. Sure. Wonderful. Um, the last thing I really wanted to ask you about was this, like the Kung Fu Panda stuff and the Jimmy Kimmel stuff, if that's okay. Yeah, of course. Okay, so obviously you've been the voice of Master Ugwe from Kung Fu Panda. So what was that, what was that like? Was it just in Pause of Destiny or has it been in other media? Just in Pause of Destiny and then um, also recorded something for a, 
other project. I don't know if it's been released, so I can't say what it is, but it was for another project um, using the character. Um, so I, but I, w I would say officially, yes, just for Pause of Destiny. Um, and that was, you know, just a handful of episodes. And uh, that was, uh, yeah, they were looking for a voice match to the you know, film version. And I, uh, I think it's Dustin that. Hoffman who voices him in the film. No. No, no, no. He's no, it's the not. One he's who... Master Shifu. Sorry. Yeah, just... Shifu. Yeah, yeah. And Fred Tattashore, uh, I believe, does Master Shifu on the, the show. He does a great Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. Randall um, Cook. Duke Kim. Mm -hmm. What? That's who voices him. Yeah. All yes. I could think of is just that Oogway quote saying that there are no accidents. <laughs> yes, there are no accidents, Paul. <laughs> um, Wow. It's funny because my, uh, I had I, I had a job earlier when I was younger, and uh, my uh, boss was very similar sounding to Ugwe, and so when I got the audition, I was like, "Hey, I would always do impressions of my boss," and uh, you know, listening to the original, it was it was pretty easy to access that and super fun to do because he's, you know, I love turtles. And uh, when he was on screen, I'm like, that's the best. It's the Yoda of the Kung Fu universe. <laughs> oh, I need to, I need to uh, get out of Kung Fu Panda film to watch again. I, mean, I remember watching one at school camp when I was younger. Oh, man, I just remember. Man. I, I could just picture that now. We were just watching it in the common room on the day we were going home. And I just remember on the bus just thinking about it, just like, oh, yeah, what if I was in the DreamWorks Cinematic Universe or something like that? <laughs> Oh, good times, good times. Uh, what else? Um, uh, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Kimmel Live. Um, so what was it like working on that as well? Well, with Jimmy Kimmel, um, it's a late night sketch show. So um, the show is live. It's different from a lot of the other late night shows where sometimes they just pre-tape everything, meaning that they'll record for an hour and then they'll cut down to half an hour. Um, but with Jimmy Kimmel, they kind of just aim to produce a live show and so it's on air and so a lot of things are last minute and they'll they'll send a alert out to other impressionists and actors and say hey we need somebody who can do uh, an impersonation of this celebrity or sound like this and so a lot of the auditions and opportunities would be last minute and i was usually um someone that they had on their rolodex when it came to impressions and uh, they'd always give me uh, give me an opportunity so i do joe biden on there i've done um i'm trying to think uh al pacino as an owl i was something recently we owl did pacino. Owl pacino wow. <laughs> uh oh no no wait no that was conan i'm sorry that was conan o'brien uh that's the conan show for jimmy kimmel yeah jimmy kimmel i think just a lot of lately a lot of politics rudy giuliani and um joe biden and mike lindell i did a fake commercial as him who's the my pillow guy but those are all american you know yeah personalities so a lot of your uh your english audience would go i don't care mate i don't <laughs> rudy giuliani what are you on about mate oh my god you literally sound like a proper englishman <gasps> what are you talking about mate <gasps> Oh my gosh! Well, it's just so surreal seeing Americans do an English, a British accent. Well, I mean, one of my favorite uh, impressions to do was Ian McKellen, and when I went, I was um, my first day at Tesco. I went out to the checkout oh, wow. line, and the lady's like, "How you doing, love? Just the uh, bags of crisps, crisp there, <laughs> got an apple, okay, 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 okay. here go for lunch." And I was like, "Well, I'm going to sound cool. I'm going to sound like Ian McKellen when I check out." So, I, so she said, "Do you have a Tesco card?" And I said, um, uh, I, I sincerely apologize at this very moment in time. I don't have a Tesco card, but I would be most happy to sign up as a member. <laughs> and she gave me this look, it's like, what? You? <laughs> what? what? Yeah, what's wrong with you? Um, so I never did that again because I realized, that, oh, yeah, nobody talks posh anywhere except in uh, Kensington <laughs> maybe yeah. Kensington Mayfair yeah. um yeah. did you ever meet Jimmy Kimmel by the way uh no no I haven't but I've, uh. I've done many things for him and he'll uh, he you know approves and that sort of thing but no 
he's always running around and uh because a lot of the impression stuff would be a pre-recorded segment or would be like recorded away from jimmy you know yeah. like in an announcer booth so yeah. yeah it wouldn't be with him at the same time yeah well, just to wrap up this interview, have you got anything in the works that you can say about yet? Or well, today, ideas? today's the day that um, Tales of Arcadia: Rise of the Titans comes out oh, wow. on Netflix, and I place the villain Scrail and Bellrock, which is also voiced by Kes Kes Bay, um, and she um, she's the other half of um, of bell rock and so that's been fun because i initiate the voice and then she would kind of uh match my k bess is her name um and um but with scrail i'm the the little ice guy so it's fun because they're two of the three from the arcane order wow. so there's bell rock scrail and nuri and um so we we play the villains and um super fun uh because we did a, a series because there was three different series there was tales of arcadia troll hunters there was uh three below and then there was wizards and i came on to the series wizards which plays with merlin and uh arthur and uh you know they mix up the uh the mythical stories and then um they culminate all three of those shows into one final movie which comes out today and wow. uh, it's super exciting because it's a it's a big like uh epic battle you know there's these volcanic ice and uh kind of uh elemental uh titans that fight all the troll hunters and they all come together and it's it's really exciting and, and super fun for the fans because it you know they finally wrap up all three of the shows as one together which is really fun wow. but that's uh, you know produced by Guillermo del Toro and mostly his vision uh, for these characters and that sort of thing. And uh, so, yeah, that's, that's coming out today. So I would try and see that if you can, which is super yeah, fun. But I'll if you haven't seen, seen the series, then you know, might want to watch the series before you watch the movie. Yeah, maybe, but I will definitely try and check it out on, at some point. Piot, it's been so lovely to chat with you. So, so lovely. my pleasure. Thanks for thanks for having me and good to speak with you again. Definitely love to see you again. Where can we find you on social media? Do you have a website? Do you have Facebook? You can just go to my website, which has links to all the social media. You can just type my name, P-I-O-T-R, Michael.com, Piotmichael.com. And that has links to all of my social media. You can follow me, stalk me, message me, bring me on your other podcast. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, Piot is a really fun guest. Will you ever come to the UK again? I'd love to. Right now with COVID, who knows? But no, I would love I would love to go back to the UK and um, get a proper tour because I only went really as a short stint and then as a college uh, student, you know, just staying at the university. So I'd love to go and uh, explore all of the wonderful areas. Yeah, and I'd, I'd love to see you as well next time you come over. Yeah, there's a lot of cons that happen there and a lot of other fans that would be fun to meet. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Anyways, you at home, thank you so much for watching this episode of In Conversation with ATF. Go check out Piot in like every show he's in because he's fantastic. Oh my gosh, I cannot stress this enough. What was a mochi, Rocking Ball Winkle? Wow, just tells of Arcadia just he's got such a resume like why wouldn't you want to hire him he's just so nice oh, man. I just you're just too great Piot honestly I I try to be <laughs> <laughs> it takes a lot of hard work oh yeah yeah same, same with me as well Aww. anyways do at home thank you for watching and I will see you around keep safe and have a nice day it's goodbye from me, goodbye from Piotr. We'll see you around. Goodbye. Bye, guys. And cut.